Uh, my next question is kind of two part. Um, you promised multi user MIMO with AC, uh, and that was a false promise. What's changed? But I also want to address one of the questions that that came up uh, from one of our users. Ron, good to see you on our call. Thanks for joining. Wave two uh, was a fraud. You guys <laughs> penetrated to schools that uh, that they're stuck with for the next five years. Is this the same non standard? that will leave schools with poorly executed gear for your selling cycles. I was wondering if you were going to throw that grenade at them. Wow. <laughs> uh, look, I look, we're, we're, look, we're, we're right with you on that, you know, but, uh, but let, let's, let's take a step back for just a moment. Um, um, you know, multi-user MIMO does work. It just doesn't work as well as, as we, as everyone thought it would when it, when it was first talked about in 2013, 2012. And remember it goes back that far. So really take a look at your network today. You're, you're existing, forget about Wi-Fi 6 for a moment. Let's just take a step back and look at those 11 AC networks that you've deployed. And what was the main reason you, what was the main features of, of 802.11 AC that caused your networks to, to need it and to see improvements? Um, and it really is around the packet aggregation in 11 AC, it aggregated packets better so that there's less acknowledgements required. Let me give you some numbers on that. Rough, roughly, plus or minus a few percentage points, 11N is less than 50% efficient. So if, if I have an RF rate of 100 megabits per, you know, I'm linked at 100 megabits per second, I'll be lucky to get 48 megabits of actual throughput, actual usable bit rate. It's about, so we usually use 50% as the round number for that. Um, 11 AC, again, I'm not talking about wave two, I'm talking about 11 AC, is 65 to 72% efficient, efficient, right? So that's why you bought 11 AC. And never, never look back on that and think you, you made a wrong decision. You did not. That was a great decision. And, and be very proud of that fact that, uh, that, that 11 AC delivered a better network. The problem is, the problem is, uh, if, if we were still, if every device, to, if we're all using Samsung S3s, which I'm not, I don't think any of you are, we'd, be, this is, we'd be fat and happy with 11AC, wouldn't we? But two things have changed. All the devices, <laughs> that's changed. Number two, all the applications. Go back and think for just a moment. Please think for just a moment, seven years ago versus today. Uh, today, we do Facebook live streaming. Devices just constantly are sending updates to social media, TikTok, Facebook, WeChat. WeChat in China is a technology, it's a social media app that is used by businesses to talk to their customers directly. So the world has changed in the last seven years. Social media is always on. Cloud never sleeps. The cloud never sleeps. We couldn't say, we didn't say that seven years ago, but today we say that and, and everybody acknowledges that we all understand that. The devices have changed, the applications have changed, and therefore the technology is, is, a, is adapting to the new reality. Yeah, and I, I, I think, you know, what, what determines upgrades is, is the client these days, right? More than, more, it's like Klaus was saying, you know, um, in, end user satisfaction, right? The quality of the experience. And, uh, you know, if you still had 11 in, or even AC wave one, your quality of experience for your students or your, or your hospital or your, you know, your employees or whoever, uh, is not going to be where, where they expect it to be. And, uh, you know, when you start that, whatever that, whatever the experience they expect is the, is the, uh, that's the demand. That's what you have to meet. And so it's, uh, you know, I don't think it was as much of the false promise. I, I agree was with multi-user MIMO, but, um, you know, the schools that we work with, with AC that still have it today, even, um, you know, saw great benefits from it and, and, now your AC clients moving to a Wi-Fi six, and we have the proof, you know, show that that they will continue to see greater benefits even with those AC clients by implementing a Wi-Fi six infrastructure. Yeah, you, know, you said something really interesting there, which is, I don't think that people are going to go to a university and go, yeah. So do you have eight hundred two eleven AX enabled in your hallways here? <laughs> I think they're just going to expect that when they go to university, their wireless doesn't suck. You know, and it's kind of like, and it's, and I feel like a total wiener for. I'm, I'm going to say it, whatever. Five years ago, I got in an airplane and I had wireless on the flight. It was the most incredible thing that had ever happened to me. It was amazing. I worked on my flight. I made money on a flight for once. It was incredible. Now, when I got on an airplane and it doesn't have Wi-Fi, that bothers me less than when I got on an airplane and it has slow Wi-Fi, right? 
Isn't that funny? So like my thoughts are people are just going to expect that this stuff is going to be in place and it's going to work. They're not going to like look down on Cambium if the network at their school is slow. They're going to look down at their school. Well, and, and Wi-Fi is, I mean, it's my daughter's senior in college and uh, we went to several college visits and one of the first three things that she was wanting to see was, do they have Wi-Fi outdoors? Do, you know, that's a decision making, uh, one of the top decision making pieces for, for universities. And it's not, do I have a signal? What, it, you know, what can I get on? What, how, What's how my good is my experience going to be? And then also being able for a university to turn that experience into, uh, you know, into potentially marketing and use it for student recruitment um, and those type of things. So it's, it is, it's part of the experience and part of the everyday aspect. 